Oscar Sunday is right around the corner, and Riz Ahmed is once again hoping for Oscar gold. He was up for Best Actor last year for his role in The Sound of Metal. Now he's hoping to walk away with Best Live Action Short Film for The Long Goodbye. He's also the executive producer of the animated documentary Flea, also up for three Oscars this year. And somehow Riz Ahmed found the time to come and chat with us. Take a look. Riz, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for uh, inviting me. It's our pleasure. So let's talk about The Long Goodbye, because the film starts with this immigrant family in Britain preparing for a wedding. Everything seems kind of lovely and very familial, and I think a lot of people can relate. And then all of a sudden, this family is attacked. And I won't say more than that, because I don't want to spoil it, but so much happens in under 12 minutes. So how did the story come together, and what was it like trying to tell that whole thing in such a short period of time? You know, you're right. There's so much that happens in this movie. I was joking with the director, Neil Carrier, that more happens in this movie than has happened in most of all my other movies combined. So it's a real roller coaster ride, and I think that's partly why people have been so excited to watch it, to share it, and pass it on. Um, i got to be honest, I wasn't sure if he'd be able to pull it off. You know, like you said, it starts off almost like a family comedy, then it goes into, I won't say too much, but it almost feels like a musical horror. And then it ends up with something quite poetic and quite personal. Um, but really what the story is about is, um, I guess, a bit of a wake-up call. You know, sometimes it feels like we're living in such a divided society. Um, it, this felt like just something very personal that me and Anil had to make for ourselves, really. It's almost like therapy to just kind of get some of our fears, our nightmares even, out there on the screen. And, of course, what happens when you share your story, even if it's a nightmare, once you share it and it connects with people, it turns into a kind of dream, you know? Um, telling a story, even if it's a difficult or hard-hitting one, is a kind of hopeful act. It's an act of connection. So it's been amazing to see how this story has connected with so many people from around the world. Now, in addition to the many hats that you wear that I mentioned in the intro, you're also a rapper, and you mentioned this is like a musical horror in sort of the middle of the film, and it's actually named after your album, The Long Goodbye. So how did the music lay the groundwork for the film? And, and you talk about personal fears that come into it. What were those personal fears that drove you to write this music and then eventually this movie? I guess they both grew out of the same headspace, and that headspace, you know, to answer your question, was one of questioning my identity, where my home was, and where I belong. And, um, you know, that's, I think, a question that a lot of people are asking themselves at this time, but it's also a timeless question. You know, um, people in Ukraine, people in Afghanistan, our main character in the animated documentary we produced called Flea, they're also asking these questions. And so I guess Anil and I, the director, we, um, we met each other at a moment. We were just asking these questions, saying, you know, things feel so divided. There's so much rising intolerance right now. Some people seem to think that people like you and me don't belong in Britain. We should go home to where we came from. Well, where is home? I thought this was my home. And, um, and so th these are kind of questions I think a lot of people wrestle with. And that's what that, that question is what the album grew out of, and it's also what this short film grew out of. And really the answer to that question is something that's delivered at the end of the film in a way that's, that's very personal. And last year you made history as the first Muslim ever nominated for Best Actor. You've been very vocal about the need for more Muslim representation in the entertainment industry in general. So can you explain why that's so important, and do you think that that message is getting through? You know, stories are how we imagine ourselves into other people's lives. It's a kind of almost like a magical kind of, like it's like a body swap technology, you know? That's how I can watch a movie and suddenly feel like I'm Meryl Streep. You know, I'm crying because Meryl Streep is going through something crazy on screen. It's, it, it's a really profound, spiritual, kind of mysterious thing, you know, telling stories. And when you open up a kind of world where certain stories are pushed to the side, certain experiences are not thought of as important or human, really dangerous things can happen. In fact, the kind of dangerous things that we portray in A Long Goodbye. So I, I think stories are a place for us to, to all realize that we're all essentially one, you know? Underneath the differences that seem to separate us, we have one set of emotions that we all draw from, 
you know? So that's why I think it's important to have all different kinds of people on screen represented. Muslims, unfortunately, over the last 20 years have been portrayed in a particularly damaging way. And we've got lots of statistics that show that and show the impact of that. So I'm hopeful that we're going to create some change. And my company, uh, Left Handed Films, is actually working with the Pillars Fund to create a kind of scholarship for the next generation of Muslim filmmakers. Their names have just recently been announced. And, you know, we're hopeful to sow some of these seeds for change. Well, good luck to you, Riz Ahmed. You're a talented actor and now a talented movie maker as well, as well as musician. Can't say enough about you and so looking forward uh, to more people seeing this film and that message getting out there. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much. And you can watch the Oscars on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC and tune in early at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for our red carpet coverage right here on ABC News Live and on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.